So we've got two new people here with us today, and our usual procedure is to ask the new people to tell us a little bit about themselves, uh, mainly uh, what brought you here. So uh, Celeste Gabriel is, uh, lives here in Ojai, and she's a licensed teacher of, um, of uh, Byron Katie's uh, mythology. <laughs> Uh, methodology, I mean to say. Um, and uh, we heard you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous because uh, Rafe is shooting. Uh, yeah. Point the gun at you. Uh, and the other uh, new person is Lynn Sneed. That's L Y N N E S N E A D. She's a uh, dental, dental hygienist, and she lives in Valencia. Highland. Huh? Hmm? I said Highland. Hi. Uh, Do we stand okay. up and say our name and say that we're non-dualists? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem. I said one time, welcome to Non-Duality Anonymous. <laughs> it's a 12-step uh, program. <laughs> so Roma decided not to attend? Uh, you know what? I didn't even think about it until... Uh, this morning in bed, and then I'm like, oh, I, it's too much for me today to try okay. to. So we'll work on it for next time. So, Celeste, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? This yeah. self. Hi, <laughs> John. Well, yeah, this self. This self. <laughs> that self. Okay. Apologies. What self? <laughs> I'm interested in freedom. Um, freedom for me, it's like um, being okay with what is. So, my friend Nat Natalie told me about uh, you, and um, I didn't think I had any need for for a teacher or a teaching. And um, hmm. lately, it's like when something comes to me, it's, I love to be open and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I guess I had your book for about a year, and uh, I've read it a couple of times, and it makes sense. And I'm trying to uh, make sense out of the whole world of, uh, you know, being one and all the separate individuals and, and us being one consciousness, you know, the consciousness of the, of the universe uh, in all of us. And uh, I work in several different offices and that's the nature of my job, you know, as we have to go here and here and here and here. And each one is, is very different, you know, very, very different situations. So uh, trying to just make sense out of all of it, you know, where I fit in, and where everyone that I encounter fits into this. So your, your work is very helpful. It's been very helpful to me. Thank you. Yeah. I just thought I'd read a letter uh, from uh, Julie Rubinsky. You may remember she was here, uh, came up from San Diego. And uh, her latest letter says, uh, Hello, Robert, your letter confirming the clarity of realization resulted in pure joy. That is, uh, her uh, revelations in her previous letter, I told her, were uh, right on target. The uh, vestiges of a separate me felt as if an accomplishment had been achieved, even as the thought and accompanying feelings were seen arising in awareness. So in other words, she's uh, noticing uh, the me that would like to achieve. I've always heard that <clears throat> when uh, self-realization occurs, you won't be there, uh, you in capital letters. I imagine that you would, you in capital letters, would meet a drastic and dramatic end. I am amused that as uh, investment in me untangles, it is fairly uneventful. Since there seems to be few words available to describe this unfolding, I have tried resorting to poetry. I'm enclosing a poem I wrote recently. 
Arising from the cradle of presence, reality is granted to a story. An abundance of characters manifest, each a reflection of creation. The embodiment of feelings and sensations is hypnotic. The never-ending commentary is mesmerizing. Suddenly, consciousness chooses to recognize itself, and interest in this celluloid world is withdrawn. Nothing is imposed on freedom. From Love, Julie. <coughs> and uh, this is a succinct summary, just one paragraph of Krishnamurti's teachings. I don't know who this person is. Uh, this was sent to me. Uh, the author of this is someone named Sudhakar Deshpande, uh, D-E-S-H-P-A-N-D-E, Sudhakar Deshpande. So I don't know who that is. But anyway, he's right on in his uh, summary of Krishnamurti's teachings. <coughs> Krishnamurti seems to suggest that there is an altogether different way of responding which is neither indulgence nor abstinence. This third possibility is just being with whatever is without trying to do anything about it, just observing attentively the what is without the least involvement in it, either in a positive or negative manner. This being choicelessly aware of what is every moment without judging it as good or bad is the only intelligent way of living and that is the real religious life. Religion for Krishnamurti consists not in practicing certain predetermined disciplines, but in being attentive every moment to the living present, without trying to do anything about it, without trying to change the what is into what should be. Religion consists in seeing and not everything doing. Everything that arises, literally everything, every thought, every me, every I, every thought of not me, not I, anything, nothing, it seems to me now, is inescapably that. Right. Yeah. And it seems for a moment that Ramana is pointing to something which is outside of mm -hmm. that, which he calls non-self. And I, that, uh, just reading it the other day, kind of, you know, wait, wait, stop. I'm not quite sure what he was pointing at. Is that non-self, capital S, yeah. or small s? I'm using the word self always with the capital, not the yes. absolute. Mm -hmm. So the absolute, in that sense, you could say creates I, mm -hmm. ego, mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. Thought does not create okay. self. Yes. That I understand, but what is this non-self if all is self? I think he's just using that as a, uh, a term for the relative. Okay. May I say something? Like sure, that? sure. Uh, the me that you're referring to, what's the separation of the me? See, I, I, I'm not sure what your question is. What is the separation in When you refer to yourself yeah. as, I don't see it anymore, mm -hmm. there's your answer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, as we read these teachers, particularly the non devotee teachers, we really have to bear in mind that in uh, most cases they're talking to people on, you might say, different levels of understanding. And so they're using different terminology, sometimes speaking actually from the point of view of the relative, other times speaking from the point of view of the absolute. And you kind of have to sort that out as you, as you look at these things too you know, to be clear about what they're, what they're getting at. The irony is that everything that we discuss and talk about can't be really expressed verbally. So we sit here and try to find words to express the inexpressible, and we're doing pretty well at it, you know, but uh, <laughs> it still can't really express the essence. Yeah, we're trying to so explain what? the unexplainable. Yeah. Um, we're using conce right? conceptual terms to, to describe something that isn't conceptual. But, you know, I, I find the less, I, the less I try to understand it, mm -hmm. the closer I am to getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the head, you know? Yeah, I kind of. The intellectualism. But then I start thinking about it again. Uh huh. Because you're saying I don't want to think about it. So. 
It is interesting that we seem to be drawn to thinking about it, that it's like we feel some need to explain it instead of just being with it. It's almost as if the thinking is the default position. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The default? Default. 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 A severe piece of hardware. Yeah. 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 Um, in the relationship between the teacher and the learner, it creates a dual mind. Mm -hmm. But yet, that seems to be the instrument to eliminate the dual mind. Mm -hmm. Can you explain your thoughts on that matter? Well, just what you said, you know, that uh, until we recognize that we don't need any help, uh, we think we do need some help. I have a question that came up for Howard and me in the car, and it, it, it's been rolling around in my head since then. I um, was coming... Uh, I was talking to a friend of ours who, and, and I was explaining that I don't take all this as seriously as some people do. Right. I, I just have gotten so, this is just, the, the, the less of this junk I have, the more enjoyment there is, and I, I love the energy of being in these groups, mm -hmm. and I, I keep seeing more and more, and it's like an addictive thing to just, to just let it all go. But I don't see it as a struggle or serious or so it's hard to I think Howard said he asked you this question too is where does the seriousness come into it because it seems that the more serious we are then the more in our heads we are mm -hmm. instead of just seeing how wonderful all this is and how blessed we are yeah. to be here instead of mm. I don't know yeah no, I think you're expressed it so seriousness does not necessarily I don't know. I, I, I offended my friend by saying that. It was just like, oh my gosh, you're not serious. Mm -hmm. This is fun. <laughs> this isn't fun. This is serious. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, as you know, for me, I, I, I like to say that nothing really matters. So how, how seriously can we take any of this? That's true. That's true. Well, it seems to me that seriousness is when you are sort of ego attached <clears throat> to whatever it is, right. uh, that you, you, you want to give it meaning, you want to give it importance mm -hmm. for you as a separate, as a separate mm -hmm. ego. Mm -hmm. And the more you let go of that, the more you can let go of your separateness. Mm -hmm. um, who was it that needs to understand it? It's, um, who are we looking to find the answers? For is that a me? Who who is that in there that has to know this anyway? Take it serious or, or you know have a big laugh or whatever. It's all it doing what it does, isn't it? That's why. And yet people really are desperate to know. Just like oh, yeah, yeah. There's spiritual what, seekers desperate, just desperate to find out the truth. It's an interesting India is always, you know, a draw for yeah. those who really hmm. want to eat, pray, and love and get there fast. And uh, sit in a cave with cobras and bring it on, you know. <laughs> bring it so on to just, just fun. Cobras are just fun. <laughs> <laughs> cobras are just fun. That, that's, that's, you know. Uh. What, what is seriousness? <clears throat> Anybody have an answer on that? Well, for me, seriousness and intensity um, sort of went hand in hand, and, and what it seemed to me to be was uh, non-acceptance of what was happening. The seriousness, the intensity was to get somewhere or get something that was different from what was happening. Is it a response or an intention? I think it's both. I mean, you, you, one could make the point, say, for instance, Ramana is reported to have spent like three years, uh, almost in a death-like thing, pretty serious from that point of view. And then, as Kay would say, then, then let's see what happens. And, and it seemed to, 
I mean, seriousness is also <coughs> what it is at times, and it may be uh, ego doing this, or it may it may be a doorway into perception. So I don't see what the problem is. I'm not saying anyone's making it into a problem. I just about seriousness. Yeah, I just you know it's uh, Krishnamurti often you would tell people to be serious. Uh, in his talks, he said, yeah. you're not being serious because he felt they were just flitting all over the place, paying attention to nothing. So for him, seriousness was almost another word at times for awareness. Like, Start to observe, be serious. And it wasn't an ego contraction thing, it was uh, quite the contrary. So I, I guess, as Ralph would say, it depends on which relative or absolute that we're, we're talking about. But I don't see a problem in seriousness. No, you, my house is on fire. I want the fire department to be serious. You, and you'd be serious about having them to be there. Yeah. I don't want them to move at all. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but if you watch Krishnamurti closely, there's such a joy there when he's talking about all this. It's just, it's infectious almost to see him just get so happy and just so mm -hmm. en enthusiastic about the topic. And that seemed to be uh, something that called to me about when I watch his videos. He's one of the very few teachers, there are others, but he's one of the very few, when you heard him speak, you did not feel that there was an I ego promoting this, that, or the other, including belief in him as the teacher. 